What is going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today we have the massive weekly update to go through and I mean massive now this is the update which replaced the Curse of All South live stream which was supposed to have come earlier they decided to drop this update as more so than not people wanted answers for the future of the game this gives us a massive insight into the future of Destiny 2 in my opinion but before we go any further people if you'd like to win some epic loot I have exclusive emblem codes, sparrow codes, gift cards and more to win some simply drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below and join my discord server linked within the video description. Can we reach 3000 likes? That'd be absolutely epic if we could. But let's get into it people and talk about the major changes coming. Now they state there are four key areas we're targeting for improvements in December. Some of these updates will arrive uh, with the DLC on December 5th and some additional updates will be included in a patch that will be deployed the following week on December 12th. Both updates combined include improvements set against the following goals. Deepen rewards for advanced players. Provide more player control over obtaining rewards. Make shards useful by adding things to use them for. And provide general quality fixes wherever possible. Okay, so we're going to move on to the features they include within this update. New systems and rewards to give our most engaged players additional optional pursuits, including a new weapon tier. Masterworks, which will feature stat trackers, random re-rollable stat bonuses, unique item tooltips and item detail screens. These will come with the patch on December 12th. Legendary weapons will drop as or be upgraded to become Masterworks versions. Masterworks will have a few advantages over the baseline legendary weapon. Track and display the number of kills with that weapon, a choice between a total count or crucible kill count only, that's up to you. You can generate orbs for you and your allies on multi-kills. That sounds great for people like me who like to play PvE. Add weapon stat bonuses uh, that are selected randomly from a small pool and are re-rollable. So that sounds good too. These masterworks drop from any source of legendary weapons for characters above that 250 power level. Unwanted masterwork weapons can be dismantled into materials that can upgrade an existing legendary weapon into a masterwork. Raid and Trials and Nine Weapons will have a very high chance to be Masterworks. We have future plans to extend Masterworks to other gear and expose your kill counts in more places e.g. that Crucible kill screen. Now this in my opinion does sound promising but I do need to hear a little more on it. The idea though that I can go out and use my legendary weapon and even upgrade it further that would be absolutely great. It just depends on what you can actually do with it. They say there's a small pool and are we rollable but what is in that loot pool which you can apply to this weapon? That's what I want to know. That's what I cannot wait to find out more on. They go on to say uh, better incentives for players to complete challenging prestige activities. They're targeting a January update to provide a better basically incentive for us to do so. I mean I want that because I don't do prestige versions of any Anything because I just there's no point really there's no point <laughs> not the way the game is at its current state anyway not in my opinion so hopefully in January the better incentives are actually better incentives they then state better rewards and replay value for strikes adventures and lost sectors in December we'll be introducing a heroic strikes playlist and more general strike rewards rewards for adventures and lost sectors are still on our radar but will not be delivered for our December updates the only thing I can think about here is strike exclusive loot. That's the only thing in my opinion that's going to make me want to go out and play strikes. It really is. They then state new ways to spend surplus currency and materials. Now these ways we will be able to spend legendary shards will be mentioned in a short while. After we've talked about these ornaments. Now they're adding armor ornaments to grant visual permutations of armor as players complete specific challenges. On December 5th this is armor ornaments will be added to some existing armor sets for more visual customization. Without losing your already equipped shaders and mods. These ornaments will be included by completing objectives specific to each set and are permanently unlocked account wide just like our exotic weapon ornaments. They will be applied to the base pieces that you may already have uh, basically collected and can now unlock on vendors if not. In season 2 the following sets have ornaments unlocked in their respective activities. Vanguard faction armor, crucible faction armor, Charles of Nine armor, Iron Banner armor and all three factions that's Dead Orbit, Future War Court and New Monarchy as well as the Eater of Worlds Raid Layer armor. So that's great, I mean that is a lot, that is a lot to play for, that is a lot to grind for. Each one of these faction armors basically have their own unique set of ornaments to go with them. That's great in my opinion, it seriously is. Now on to Zer, and Zer has some new offerings for us players collecting exotics. 
Every week you'll be able to acquire one of the new fated engrams using the legendary shards that will decrypt as exotics that ain't already in your collection. I have one question here though. What happens if you already have every exotic in the game? Can you just not buy these? Who knows? A simpler three of coins that boost exotic drop rates from any source for four hours. So no obscure stacking mechanics or need to reply before every boss, just like we used to do in Destiny 1. These will cost you legendary shards and you can have as many as you like here. Banshee has some updates on weapon and armor mods too. Uh, for players wanting to clear out some mod inventory space, rare quality mods will dismantle into gunsmith materials and have a chance to produce legendary quality mod components. I mean I've, I've deleted hundreds upon hundreds of rare mods I seriously have. For players chasing specific legendary mods, including legendary kinetic mods, will offer a selection of specific legendary mods for direct purchase, with a selection that will rotate daily and cast legendary shards and mod components. So that's a great feature to be honest. They go on to talk about continued improvements to the Iron Banner and Faction Rallies, including uniqueness of rewards, which we already know about the ornaments already. But they state Faction Armor and Weapons will be unlocked for purchase for Legendary Shards and Faction Tokens on most Faction Vendors. All five armor slots will always be present, and weapons will rotate weekly on Factions that have them. Slots will be unlocked by claiming reward engrams for the respective faction. You will get credit for engrams you may have already claimed since launch, so I will have a lot of credits waiting for me for sure. For players chasing a world legendary or looking for masterworks, Master Raul will sell some of his rumoured hoard of legendary engrams for legendary shards. This will come on December 5th with the DLC update. On December 12th, they speak of Commander Savala and Lord Shax uh, will basically sell gift consumables for legendary shards that can be used during a strike or crucible match that will serve the following functions. Grant bonus rewards to everyone in that activity upon completion, friend or foe alike. Award anything from faction tokens to a round of exotics for everyone in that match. That is just crazy. Another thing they mentioned coming in December 12th, exploit safeguards on chests and resource nodes are greatly relaxed and players should encounter them less frequently. Even if they do drop rates for tokens, it's only reduced by 30% instead of 0%. Glimmer though will not be affected. We want to associate a visual indicator with this in a future update, but we weren't able to pull that off with this update, but they say they hear us. December 12th, vendors will now beacon you to hand in your reputation tokens only when you're carrying enough to earn a reward engram, which is great. I hated going back to the tower and seeing every vendor wanted to see me just because I had one token to cash in. They speak about changes affecting the reputation tokens coming on December 5th. Daily challenges will have reputation tokens awards increased across the board. Cade's treasure chests still offer variable rewards, but now guarantee at minimum a pair of destination appropriate reputation tokens. Strikes will drop a larger number of Vanguard reputation tokens. Common quality destination resource tokens will have their drop rates increased to 100% and values per token increased as well. Buy 50% for your common quality tokens and 250% for rare quality tokens. On the balance, reputation required per reward engram will increase for destination factions by plus 37% and the gunsmith by plus 50%. Leviathan raid tokens will be redeemed at Benedict immediately upon obtaining a token instead of requiring a full clear before unlocking. So there's a lot of big changes coming to PvE for damn sure. Now we're going to move on to the info for PvP players right here. Private matches for the Crucible. They're still targeting a early 2018 release and I expect to have a better insight into the timing of this in the new year. We are also moving rank PvP to the top of our priority list for next year to support the competitive community and a lot of PvP players are going to be loving this, they seriously are. Crucible tuning like adjusted supremacy scoring and better spawning rules. In December we will introduce additional updates and bug fixes intended to improve these areas of the Crucible. Better incentives for completing Crucible matches and penalties for quitting competitive games. A quit a penalty system is currently in development. You can expect an update on the deployment of this system in the new year. And they then speak about that emote interface that allows players to equip Salty, Spice Raymond, Six Shooter and flip it all out at the same time. Emote interface improvements are still on the list. You can expect an update on the deployment of this within the new year. 
and they basically end the weekly update with this with the launch of the Curse of Osiris and the beginning of season 2 you can expect to see a full suit of patch notes that will document all of the changes outlined above as well as additional gameplay and sandbox tuning changes the team is making to improve Destiny 2. We'll also soon be providing preload and launch day details as well as a roadmap for our season 2 content which includes the dawning in mid-December. So people, damn, there's a lot of things being changed with the game. But is it enough? I mean there's a lot of things, a lot of new incentives to play the game here and to be honest I don't really mention anything about the Curse of Osiris 2 besides a few of the ornaments within the red layer. But that new weapon tier feature in my opinion probably sounds the best here besides the fact they actually acknowledge that people want a ranked PvP system too which I cannot wait to hear more on. But yes people it's definitely heading in the right direction for sure. I'm not sure how much endgame here though is mentioned, but like I said, a few core mechanics need to be changed in order for any endgame to work. And it seems as though they're heading in the right direction on that for sure. But guys, let me know what you think about the changes I've mentioned that are coming on December 5th, December 12th and into the new year. Do you think it will save Destiny? Let me know down below. Do you think it's too late? Let me know that down below also. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully people, I will see you on that next one.